How are we doing, everyone? Welcome to the Caught by Happy podcast. Welcome to day whatever the heck it is of our quarantine or stay home lockdown or whether it be a law where you are or still a formal recommendation. Or, you know, maybe you're listening to this episode sometime in the distant future when everything is normal and fine and all this was just a strange terrifying nightmare that your brain has managed to somehow forget. Oh, how we long for that day. But if you're still listening to this around the time that it's published, I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're feeling well. And I certainly hope your friends and your family are feeling well and following all those social distancing requirements that are being asked of us. I don't know if you're out of work because of this, but if you are, please take advantage of any assistance that may be offered to you. And if you are a freelancer or a small business owner who has had the work dry up, I don't know what I can do. But if there's any way I can help promote your services on this here podcast or my very poorly followed social channels, I'm happy to do so, of course, for free. Just email me at caughtbyhappy at gmail.com. Give me a little background on your hustle and how people can get in touch with you, and I'm happy to do it. Today on the show, I'm talking with Kira Rooker. She's the brains behind the apron on the YouTube channel Quarter Castle. And if you're watching cooking shows, if you're into watching cooking shows or videos about how to bake something, I think you'll really enjoy her channel. She's definitely got the personality for being in front of the camera, and she's kind of carved out a little niche in this plant-based baking space. She's a total creative person, one of those people who can write, who can shoot a video, light it, edit it, do it all. And she's got the chops for being a YouTube personality as well. She's one of those unicorns who's really in her infancy with Quarter Castle, and I think if you check it out, you'll you'll really, really enjoy it. You might also enjoy starting your own podcast, and I think you should, because what the world needs now is even more people clogging up the internet with their content, right? No, but seriously, if you've ever thought about starting your own podcast, now is the perfect time. All you got to do is, well, number one, you got to have an idea, but then grab yourself some equipment and record your show. But if you actually want people to hear it, then you got to have a podcast host. And for me, Buzzsprout is hands down the best partner for hosting and distributing my podcast. They offer some fantastic resources for tracking your listens and analyzing performance. And they have a world of information available to help you produce the best damn podcast you can possibly make. I'm going to put a link in my show notes that you can check out. Starting a podcast with Buzzsprout using that link will get you a $20 Amazon gift card and it'll help me support this show. And if you are starting a podcast or any creative endeavor, also please check out the Ring Media Network. And you can find that at ringmedia.com. That's R-R-I-N-G media.com. And just join other like-minded creators who like to empower and encourage each other to make awesome stuff. All right. So before we get started here, I just want to send a quick thanks, a special thanks out to episode 12 guest, Josh David from the YouTube channel Fix It Bong Bong. He's the one who introduced me to today's guest, Kira, and he's doing some great stuff over on his channel as well. So if you haven't listened to his episode, go back to that January episode and dig into it and then go devour his videos on YouTube. But we're going to get started here. Here's my chat with the creative queen of Quarter Castle, Kira Rooker. Oh, look at you. You got like one of those little ear, like a gamer thing. Oh, yes. My husband is a gamer thing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. First of all, I got to thank Josh for hooking this up. How do you know Josh? Oh, my gosh. We go. It's like 10 years ago. We met at a restaurant. So we were both in the restaurant industry as servers. Yeah. Are you guys still close or? Oh, uh, we recently reconnected. I don't even know how we reconnected. It might have been Instagram. And then he was like, wait, you do YouTube? And he was like, I do YouTube. And then we were like, oh, YouTube friends. Like, there's so many. <laughs> there there aren't enough people, I feel like, in my immediate circle who, one, value YouTube or do it. So, so you are a YouTube creator. And I checked it out. <laughs> It's like no, it's ser- like you're. I'm. I'm gonna get nerdy here because I want to talk about like production value and stuff. Because your production value is like off the charts. It's crisp. It's smooth. It's nice. It looks like you got like a team working on this. That's so kind of you to say. It is the one thing that I think I'm unwilling to compromise on. I will throw like an entire project away if it fails. But if if like the audio or something went bad, I'll just re-record it. So tell me about your channel first of all. Sure. So it's Quarter Castle, and it started with the intent of giving my friend her one true dream, which was me being on the Great British Bake Off. I was like, well, this is never going to happen, but we can at least pretend. I started with like this 10-episode 
series for her. And then I just kept doing it. And when when was that? So I started filming last March. I started floating episodes in July. And has your production value always been this crisp? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely those that first one is like Whew, it's rough. It's so hard to look at. Really? Oh, yeah, because like audio was bad. I didn't have like a recorder. I didn't have I was, I was using a two camera setup, but one was an older camera with an older lens. All these things that I just started hyper comparing uh, to a lot of YouTubers who I was just like, they make good stuff. What's wrong? And I was like equipment. So mm. I, I had to adjust. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what got you into this. But first, I want to go back. Back before you even met Josh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just want to know about you. Where did you where did you grow up? Where are you from? Yeah, so I'm I would say the majority of my formative years, like before ten, uh, were in North Carolina, this tiny little city. It's not even a city, it's a town, at the border called Roanoke Rapids. Uh if you've been ninety five yeah. south. Yep. <laughs> You got the Roanoke Theater. I always drive I always see it when I drive by. We do. And the Cracker Barrel. That's what I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like home. Yeah. So that was my my beacon. So yeah, I'm from that tiny little town that smells like uh, a hot dog water because of the paper mill. <laughs> <laughs> so what what brought you to Richmond? My parents. Uh, honestly, it's one of the only towns listed that looks like a city on those green uh, sort of like mile marker boards. Yeah. So uh, that's where we went. We went to Richmond. <laughs> so do they come here for work? They did. Uh, they yeah. came here for life and then found jobs. So you've been here for pretty much your your adult life, all of it, teenager? Uh, yeah, definitely all through high school, college, grad school. I moved after grad school. I ended up coming back for like a second. Oh, where'd you go? I went to, so I was in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah, and then I worked in San Francisco. And then I came back because I was about to move to Chicago because... That's just the nature of advertising. And then... Is that the field that you're in then, advertising? No longer, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, tell me about that. How'd you, get in, how'd you get into advertising? I just sort of fell into it. When you're a generalist in the creative field, it, it's hard to place you because you're like, oh, I like to write, but I like to design. But like, I don't, I don't feel like I have like a craft craft. Mm. Um, I just like doing things and... You, you sound just, like me. Yeah. You just end up doing everything and you're like, but I like everything. Yeah. And it was that was an easier way to sculpt it. an education around me was to just claim that it was creative advertising. <laughs> so what were you doing out in San Francisco then? Uh, I was working as a copywriter just briefly with a friend. My my time in the actual field of advertising was so short because it didn't feel like a match for me. I just just not my vibe. Also, I don't like making up problems. For people uh, <laughs> I don't mean to really take a dump on anyone in that space like I just I personally am not good at it I'm not good at like finding the spin or the fun in mm-hmm. that so I ended up in um, product design wow I've been doing that yeah so you're talking like industrial design type stuff no I wish it's actually tech so I'm in financial tech I work as a experienced designer and content strategist all right it's like one of those like catch-all type <laughs> titles and roles that you know yeah. that creative slash smart people get <laughs> for for generalists for generalists Gen- generalists right yeah you tried chicago out or you never made it there never even made it my husband my now husband intersected me at a lowe's and how old were you when you met him uh i think i was like 25 about to turn 26 trying to like ride the wave of being a young person moving but you were out on your own here in richmond though yeah, I, I came back for a couple of months uh, as I was, like, trying to find my bearings, what I wanted to do, like, and then I was like, I guess I could move to Chicago for a couple of months before the winter yeah. <laughs> and then move back. But you never made it. Never made it. I did visit Chicago once. The weather was not good. But, yeah, it was it was <laughs> right. a great town, yeah. During this time when you're in San Francisco, you're meeting your husband, your future husband, are you into baking or anything like that at the time? Are, did you Have you always enjoyed doing that? Or is it something you discovered later? Baking was that thing that I feel like I just said I wanted to do. I've, I'm sure you have something in your life where you're like, I really want to build a deck. You know, like. <laughs> there's, there's That's like, weird. I really do. I need yeah. to rip down mine and build a new one. Same. 
So that's like, it was just something that like, as a young person, I always identified as something I wanted to do. Like, I just want to bake. And I think I tried a couple of times, but just as a, a younger human being, really lack the patience that it took to refine something. So I just kind of kept putting it off, kept sort of like half-assing uh, baking projects until I moved in with my husband, where once you have the motivation to cook and bake for two people, it becomes more realized. And actually for my birthday that year that I, that the, I think our first year together, he bought me a KitchenAid stand mixer and that mm-hmm. kind of like it was like dynamite all of a sudden everything was like the kitchen was covered in flour like all the time like I couldn't be stopped or eating too many sweets it just became like a a tool that I didn't know I needed Mm. but a catalyst just dive head first into figuring out everything that thing could do oh absolutely your girl tried macarons a little too early in her career (laughs) yeah (laughs) failed miserably very miserable you said you were 25 26 about that Mm -hmm. time and how old are you now I'm 31, about to turn 32 in okay. May. Well, early happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks. I, doesn't that, like, result in bad luck? I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Not that luck could get much worse, man. It's rough out there, so I'll take it. I, I asked you if you were interested in baking, but were you interested in being a creator? I mean, I know you're a creative person, but were you mm-hmm. interested in, in having a YouTube channel or having some kind of blog or anything like that back then? Oh, I had all of them. So oh, you did? I, I did YouTube in 2006. The first video I ever posted to YouTube was me and my roommate singing Girlfriend by Avril Lavigne. <laughs> if you, one that dates me, but two, like, man, it was maybe 2006, 2007. Yeah. I, then I did like a, a stop motion and then I pretty much quit. You're and, a pioneer. Uh, I did, you know, pioneers stick with it and stay alive, right? That's usually what happens. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't, you didn't catch the bug right away. You kind of you let it go. I was a working student, so I had like two jobs at all times mm-hmm. and coursework. So it really wasn't like a great space for me, which is how I ended up in advertising. And then I ended up doing a bunch of student work on that YouTube channel. too. Yeah. yeah. Did you learn a lot when you were working in those fields that you're kind of using now? Or were you just kind of like honing your craft as to best practices. In other words, like knowing what's not working. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I don't think I still know what's not working. (laughs) But I think really that copywriting element Mm -hmm. probably helped me. It's just like idea generation. And I think that's where a lot of people get capped, right? They're like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I'll just do a trend. And I think it's, there's this level of perseverance in advertising that's like, no one likes it. You just have to keep going until mm-hmm. someone likes it. That's right. Just keep throwing it at the wall until yeah. somebody licks it off. Some, oh, God. <laughs> Coronavirus. Sorry. Yeah. I, it's it's like spaghetti, right? Like definitely walking into rooms with creative directors who just are like seagulls, right? They come in and just shit on everything and leave. Like, sure. Yeah. They take what they want and leave the rest. But yeah, I think I, I the toughness and the perseverance in that that I got probably helped me sort of maintain pace that I have now. And are you, you're still in the industry? No, I'm in experience design. Right. Okay. So it's not the same. I would say it's a softer space. Are you doing a lot of copywriting in that or are you doing more like user design? So you do both based on what your team needs, right? So Uh technically I start I start with what are team needs and I end up filling spaces like animation or copywriting or product writing design. So you don't have to call out your employer, but I'm guessing you're one of the big the big guys here in Richmond. Yeah, one of them. <laughs> the big the biggest guy? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, good. So that's paying the bills for you. Oh, absolutely. Now, you've got this other thing going. Mhm. Quarter Castle. Mhm. Which is awesome by the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. So let's get into that a little bit. When you started doing this as a kind of challenge with your friend, as you mm-hmm. said, tell me about like how you decided I'm going to keep doing this. So I was creating in a bubble for about three months, right? There was no feedback. It was just me and being creative and sort of the spirit of YouTube in me without mm-hmm. all of the non-feedback or feedback or thumbs downs. And so I think what it was, honestly, sort of my share strategy was hit the reddit share with friends and family they're gonna be nice no matter what right like Mm -hmm. friends and family so when i hit reddit and i got feedback people saying like hey i just binged all of these when are you making more like 
hey, I really love this. I like watching these. They're very soothing. Or, you know, the connection is what brought me back to why I, I love YouTube. There was that space I told you right before I moved to, or I was trying to move to Chicago and I met mm-hmm. my husband. I was kind of in like a dark space because I was like, I don't really like my job. I don't like my field. I just spent so much time trying to become this person that can succeed in this space. And it wasn't really what I wanted. And I kind of like fell into a sadness and I found someone on YouTube who I just like liked watching. And it kind of felt like a nice positive space space for me Mm -hmm. and someone that was like constantly sort of creating content and I knew they were there and it was a a constant for me. Were they creating cooking content or just? No, dude, it's Grace Helbig. Do you know who she is? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I found her seven or eight years ago. Yeah, she's hilarious. Yeah, well, she was like exactly what I needed. I needed someone who didn't give a shit and was like, I'm just doing stuff because I'm doing it and I also make money. (laughs) And I was like, dope, cool, you do you. (laughs) That kind of like pushed me forward when I started getting comments like that. Like someone else was like, thank you. This is helping me. I'm endeared by this, by you. That sort of validation, sadly, is kind of what kept pushing me. So how have you been kind of balancing this whole, you know, I need to work and make money, but I also really want to put my whole heart into Quarter Castle? Yeah, I don't. Um, (laughs) It's not. I I don't feel like I'm balancing it very well. I feel like I have two full-time jobs. Yeah. Yeah, I have to do like two or three in a day to make it worth it. And that can be, depending on when I start, it can be from like three to midnight or like five to midnight. You know, it's it's been, I've been filming past, you know, one. And I don't, I think that's pretty typical of YouTube. Yeah. But on my weekends, I have to structure it that way so that I can see people eventually <laughs> and sort of plan around how I intend to engage with the human race. Mm. Because otherwise, I'm like, I'm working at night, I'm editing. On weekends, I'm shooting. I'm editing some more. On Saturdays, I usually post. It's just you. Yeah, it's just me. Your husband's not helping you shoot stuff? Oh, you know what? He does help my audio. So I send him my audio, and he'll be like, yeah, I'll pull that fridge noise out for you. And that's (laughs) that's his contribution. (laughs) So, well, he also comes on. Everybody needs an audio engineer. I'm trying to come on myself. (laughs) Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I I mean, yeah, he does process my audio. He's like, yeah, take 15 minutes. And that's like my one ask. And he just sort of like invited himself to be like a taste tester. Yeah, I saw him taste the, uh, the whipped coffee. Yeah. You know, he inserts himself. He loves, he's an improv. So. Oh, is he? Yeah, he gets really awkward on camera. I'm always surprised because I'm like, (laughs) You do this all the time. What is this? So how has the channel grown over the years? Well, it hasn't been a year of me going live. It'll be a year in July. So I would say it's been really moderate to slow on the slow end for me or what I expected. You know, you see people like sprout up and are featured creators. But I think like what I'm happy with is there's anyone watching at all. That's fine with me. If it's my mom, sure. Hey, mom, how you doing? Like, (laughs) it's been a way for people to sort of see a glimpse into my life, which I'm very private. I've been super private for a long time. I also protect my time a lot. So I don't see a ton of people. I'm Mm. working all the time. You know, growth wise, I'm not impressed, but people are like, this is good. I'm like, okay. (laughs) Well, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think you're eventually going to, are you waiting for that? Boom, I'm on my way. Or are you just going to keep doing this and be happy with however many viewers you're getting now? I think no matter what, I need to just be happy with creating. And that's satiated something in me. It's forced me to share and teach in the way that suits me. It's the one place where I don't feel like I have to be a certain way. I'm like, I'll just be me. It's fine. If they watch, they do. If they don't, who cares? Like, that's just kind of where you have to be to create consistently. Yeah. I mean, I got to tell you, I have great respect for people who think that way. And (laughs) they're not. I mean, I know you're probably looking at the numbers, but like for people who just have to create because they have to do it, you know what I mean? There's something inside them that says, this makes me feel good. This is what I'm meant to do. This is what I really am. I enjoy doing this and not being afraid of, oh, I've only got. 30 viewers on this one. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's all about like, you learn from that too, right? You're like, if they don't like it, then as long as I liked it, I feel like usually people have a 
good response to it. But then there's always that one, you're like, this one sucks, and you still put it out. Sure. But it's the best one. It's like, people no, are like, I, I love this. I, I totally em- can <laughs> empathize with that. I have experienced that. Like, this is the worst. I don't even want to put it out, but I put mm-hmm. it out, and all of a sudden it takes off. Right. You just got to do it. And every time that you put out a piece of content, and every time that you spend all the time that you spend editing it, all the time that you spend shooting it, it all goes into that hours of experience. Was it the 50,000? Is that what it is? 10,000, 50,000, whatever it whatever, is. It's, yeah. all, it's all going into that, those minutes and hours of experience that you mm-hmm. can build on and get better down the road. Yeah, I agree. I I feel like I've learned a ton. What I am worried about is like where stagnation starts, right? Mm. Like, so once I stop improving or I get lazy, Which is what you see in a lot of like larger YouTubers who are trying to keep up with pace and, you know, demand. They let that sort of fall. Are you feeling any of that now? No, I'm learning so much. Yeah. Yeah. Like, especially in like the production space. I think that's where I like to hide. What do you mean? Well, I mean, that's always been why I've made stuff is because I want to make things not necessarily be the person on the camera, Mm. but for the lack of content, like I can't make anything without anybody in front of it. Like, I mean, my dog was featured several years for my friend's birthday, half birthday videos. So after that, I was like, well, I can't make a cooking show with him, but cooking is fun. And it ended up being what kind of kept me going is like, this is fun. I want to share more ways to make this fun. So let's talk about the cooking a little bit and the baking. Mm hmm. You got into it five years ago or so mm-hmm. when you got the when you got the mixer. <laughs> yeah. How have you continued to learn? What are you what are you doing to improve your culinary expertise? Technique wise, yeah. I mean, I watch a ton of YouTube, right? Like I am subscribed to Bon Appetit. I'm always like looking for more content. What happened recently is that I switched into more plant based food, which is mm-hmm. a new challenge for me where the possibility of failure is so high. Like <laughs> It's already hard to do a lot of things in baking, just technique wise, but to try and do it on plants and substitutions is like Uh a whole new level of interest for me. And Uh I think that's why I I kept going because I started with like very traditional baking. And then I was like, I don't want to eat this. It's so heavy. I don't, I don't feel good. So I started trying to find ways to make it more fun and more challenging. Uh Does that make sense? (laughs) No, I mean, it's a, it's a space that I think needs more content in, you know what I mean? There's not yeah. a lot of vegan baking channels out there, I don't I don't think. I don't search it out, so I don't know. I think they're, they're out there. I think they vary in personalities for sure. I would say almost all women I, or whatever YouTube serves to me are like usually women. You know, some of them are kind of looking for a male audience and other ones are kind of just like I'll take any audience and (laughs) I'm kind of in that space where I'm like whoever yeah yeah are you a vegan no I am a I'm a vegetarian I've been vegetarian for like 17 or 18 years and then yeah and then I've been more aware of dairy I've tried to reduce whatever comes from like the industry, right? Like mm-hmm. that stuff is really terrible for our environment. And also it just, I'll get a zit after like looking at butter, right? Like it's bad for your body. Dairy's not great, but cheese is delicious. I'm eating so much dairy right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to do that keto thing. So it's just all about those high oh, fat. Yeah. <laughs> Avocado, bake it. Yeah. Dairy. Lots yeah. of butter, lots of uh, heavy cream. Is it working for you? Yeah, it always works for me. I do it every year. (laughs) I mean, now with the corona and everything happening, normally I start in like February, March, where I start slimming down for the beach. For that beach bun. But now now I'm just like, why am I doing this? I'm not going anywhere this summer. Yeah, there's there's no beach. The beaches are closed. Yeah. (laughs) But then in like September, October, I start eating everything I could possibly get my hands on. Oh, yeah. that uh, That's when I start practicing for holiday bakes. Yeah. It's it's rough here for a couple of months, for sure. When you're um, creating some of these plant-based recipes and dairy-free recipes, are you doing a lot of trial and error before you record? Because I've noticed on some of your videos, you're really like kind of open, like, I don't know if this is going to work. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> Um, sometimes I've tested, but I found like, even if I've tested it five times, like there's something that always goes wrong on camera, right? Like, I don't know what it is about me 
whatever gravity changes while you're filming, I, something bad will happen. So mm. I started being like, you know what? I don't care. Let's just see. Let's do it together. Are you scripting any of it or are you just going off the cuff the whole time? Uh, You mean like recipe wise or? Well, I mean that you're delivery. Mm, no, I don't know how to script. I don't follow scripts very well. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm very bad at scripts. Let me just like be very clear. I can't. Do you outline or you just go? I know what steps need to happen. Mm. Then I just talk while that's happening. Yeah. It's what's been happening for yeah, sure. It's working. Thanks. Yeah, it's great. All right. So tell me where the name Quarter Castle came from. Oh, yeah. So my address actually is a quarter. Like it has a quarter after it. Oh, okay. I feel like I'm giving up my address when no, I say don't that. Tell, but... I mean, we get it. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah, 22 yeah. and a quarter. Yeah. 22 and a quarter. It's strange, right? It's, yeah. it's what happens in, you know, cities where like it's built. It's a very small house. Are you in the city of Richmond? I am. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in a very small closet in a very small house i think we nicknamed i nicknamed it quarter castle forever ago like when i first moved in and then Uh it's sort of been this space where i've i've learned how to feed myself you know sew for myself it's been like a a creative oasis for me personally so tell me about some of the goals you have for the channel where like where do you see this thing going in the next few years there's always the dream, right? Like there's the dream goal, which is like, I would love to sustain myself on it. I'd love to be just a source of entertainment yeah. in that food space. Is the end all be all to be like, I'm quitting my day job and this is my thing? Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. it's like, it's it's what I would do if I wasn't paid, right? I'm doing right. it and not getting paid. I am not monetized. There's no income. I'm spending all of my income making this stuff. I feel like if that was something I could do every day get up and make bread on camera I absolutely would but then there's like the more realistic part of it where it's like oh if I could monetize part of it right like if it was part of my income I could maybe go out and sort of curate my career you know what Mm -hmm. I mean where I'm not like you're not a professional youtuber you're just like you know it's it's a hustle like there's that hustle option well if you had a crystal ball and you looked (laughs) in it and it said you're going to be able to do that you're going to be able to quit your job, but it's going to be 10 years from now. But you oh, have God. to do, but you have to work hard for the next 10 years doing these mm-hmm. two jobs. Would you continue to do it? Oh, yeah. I mean, 10 years is what? I'll be 40 something. Who cares? Like, <laughs> I will, you know, as long as my like back's not out and, you know, I'm not in a walker, I'll keep doing it. Sure. Awesome. Tell me something that kind of frustrates you about what you're doing about Quarter Castle. Oh, so many things. Where to start? Uh, I think it's the algorithm, right? I feel like if you're not monetized, if you're not already there, it's hard to get your content in people's hands. Yeah. I would say that's really frustrating. And I think another thing probably frustrating is I can't make fast enough. Yeah. Because of the quality that I want and because of like the time that I put in and because I have a full-time job, I just don't have, well, I guess I kind of have 40 hours that I put in every week (laughs) on a video, but realistically, I don't have the full-time capacity to do it. And that frustrates me. What's your publication schedule looking like? How often are you trying to post? I have been doing like bursts of weekly posts. That's how I started. I started posting every Saturday, but I had worked for several months to get up that content sort of pile. I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to stockpile and still give myself a break. I think that's where I really struggle is like, here, every video doesn't need to be like 20 minutes long. Like who's even watching it? There's fall off at like the three minute mark, uh-huh. sometimes sooner, one second. Like <laughs> How, how um, long are your videos normally? What's the average? My videos are between two I think the one that I posted last Saturday was like two minutes and they go up to like usually around 10 minutes. I tried Mm -hmm. to cap it because people aren't invested in me yet. Right. So asking them to watch a 20 minute video is a lot. But I film for hours. Right. That stuff takes hours. Yeah. And I'm sure you're editing for many hours as well. Yes. (laughs) Very true. Tell me about the equipment you have. What kind of what kind of cameras are you running? Sure. I have a Nikon Z7 and a Z6. I'm working with a 35 millimeter 1.8 on my main camera. So like Mm -hmm. the the wide shot. And then Mm -hmm. my close up one, I just have the kit lens from the Z6. And the Z6 takes all of my like hand footage. Mm -hmm. And then I also work with. It's not overhead, right? It's like angled. It's angled. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. I have 
a fan on my ceiling. There's no way. My husband once did volunteer to be my rig, uh, and he helped me fill an overhead. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like shaky, like moving. And I'm like, yeah. are you being still? He's like, yeah, I'm super still. And I get the footage back and it's like <laughs> all over the place. So I also film with like, I have an Osmo action, which is shit inside. And then I also have the DJI Osmo pocket. Sometimes I film with that too. Okay. Those are more like the vloggy, very mm-hmm. like impromptu things that I do. And you got like a little light kit going there. I do. I have, so I have a 10 inch and an eight inch, the pancakey flat LEDs that are like lit around the outside. And then I use a ring light. There's like the, the flat ones. They're the best because they're so compact and you can just sort of like mm-hmm. feel like you have a small kit. I use like the clamps, like the C clamps to just clamp them to our cupboards or our, our shelving. Yeah. And then the ring light on my Z7. So you invested in this. Yes, but no. I'm a hobbyist. I was always a like photography hobbyist, and I had two cameras when we started. We, me, I. <laughs> Just say we. It sounds better. I do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you got a team yeah, behind yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, it's me and me and me. Uh, when I started, I had a DSLR, and then I was like, man, the the mirrorless is so much more compact, and it's you know not very heavy. I feel like it's not gonna fall off of something and you know shatter into a thousand mm-hmm. pieces. So I traded up at the beginning of the year. And got two of the mirrorless and just went in because I was like, this is fun. But yeah, I've always kind of spent too much on this hobby. Well, hopefully it'll pay off for you. Who knows? Look we'll we'll at that investment back. Yeah. Who Maybe. Cares? Who cares? As long as you're enjoying it, right. What are you using to edit? Uh, I use Premiere Pro. Okay. Yeah. Like, like exclusively. I cannot open After Effects. My computer will just like explode. <laughs> so all of the that's animations. Your next, that's your next investment. I mean, the same for me. Like After Effects will destroy my computer. Yeah, I upgraded and it still makes my computer run so hot. Yeah. I got the the MacBook 16. Yeah. I had been editing on a 2014 for however many years. And then I finally was like, dope, there's a new computer. And then they were like, we advise people who edit video and aren't doing like you know, 3D rendering, go ahead and just get the 32 gig. You're fine with 32 gigs of RAM. I was like, as soon as I tried to run something, I was like, I needed 64. Who told me this? <laughs> <laughs> I want to do right. so much more. Well, right now, Apple's like offering um, Final Cut free for 90 days or whatever. And I was going to try it out. And then I was like, wait a minute, like the requirements on this are going to, even though it says my computer can run it no problem, mm-hmm. it will destroy it. I just don't feel like I have the level of control that I need in Final Cut. I don't think I've used Final Cut in so many years that I don't even know what I wouldn't even know what to do. I remember seven. Seven was fine, but everything after that, especially like the ten, I was like, I'll yeah. never. It looks like iMovie. I can't. <laughs> right, but I, yeah, I'm getting in. I'm getting into Premiere a little bit more. Like I haven't had to use it very much except for a little bit in uh, my old gig when I was making like tabletop videos and stuff like that and doing some editing so now i'm i'm trying to get like a video element to this podcast mm-hmm. but now that i'm in the closet i'm obviously not running video right oh now, yeah so. no yeah <laughs> <laughs> please do not use this video but even for like run you know making soundbite clips or pulling up after effects so i could do like the audiogram deal yeah i was thinking about like upgrading my microphones and stuff like that but now i'm like hmm, maybe i need to upgrade my computer it's hard because like once you start upgrading one thing you're like man if only this other thing that's what happened to me i got upgrade fever it was bad it all happened at once (laughs) right but you know the thing i keep telling myself is if the content's there you don't have to worry about the equipment oh yeah you've seen youtube right like people film on their phone and they're making like a million dollars a year and you're like how (laughs) what is it that you do what angel came down and kissed you what content angel loves you so much so you're going to keep doing this thing. Yeah. You, you're going to keep at it. And if people want to find you, they can find you where? YouTube.com slash Quarter Castle or Instagram, Quarter Castle Kira. All those things. I don't know where else I am. Twitter? I'm not very interesting on Twitter. No. No, I mean, like, are you interesting on Twitter? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, <laughs> are you are you using Twitter to promote and stuff? Or, or are you just kind of like, is it's there and once in a while you go in? I have two accounts. I have like a personal account and then I have this quarter castle one and it kind of gets neglected, but it's where I follow like all the food people. And Mm -hmm. so I just start like retweeting a lot of food things and I'm like, I guess this is relevant, but also I accidentally have like a stray opinion about food 
once in a while and then promotion which does it goes absolutely nowhere like just yeah. have n- nothing going on <laughs> twitter's tough i think i have four twitter accounts one you know the one for the podcast i, I wouldn't say i messed it up it's good it's great it's you know i, I follow great accounts but I feel like we're just all talking to each other. We're all like podcasters. Yes. No, like I'm not prom- I'm not promoting myself. I'm following other podcasters who are trying to promote themselves as well. So we're just kind of all talking talking to ourselves. It just becomes like a little camp of people who are just like, would you like to trade, you know, for this? And you're like, right. yeah. So we all yeah. have the same things we can trade. <laughs> right. It's like a little incestuous group. <laughs> yeah. Are you So what are you doing on Instagram? Because you're pretty active there. I like to just post food content, but I mean, my stories, it's all about stories now, right? Like people are like, what you doing? Like, I can't post like a highly produced, you know, styled food photo every day, but you can look at exactly what I'm eating, what my cat looks like when he's sleeping, what my husband looks like when he's eating something like all these little moments that I think I've, I've made some, some friends there who found me through quarter castle. And I think that's really fun. Um, now, are you doing video when you're recording video? Are you mm-hmm. doing separate videos just for Instagram or other channels, or is it primarily for YouTube and then you piece it out for Instagram? It's always for YouTube. That's where I'm like, is this strategy? And that I meant to say it earlier when you asked me what was frustrating is like, what is the strategy? Like, what what's mm. my end goal here? Because somebody was like, don't sleep on Facebook because you can make money on Facebook. You know, right. don't sleep on Instagram. And then Don't I was like, on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, you can sleep on TikTok now and stream it. So <laughs> <laughs> do whatever. <laughs> right. I'm still trying to attract my tribe, right? Once you have them, they'll find you. They'll go wherever you go, where you, wherever you meet them. I feel like that, but that's just not. I don't feel. I feel like I'm just broadcasting to all my friends. I'm like, hello, friends. Like, yeah. Thanks for watching, mom. Like, that's kind of all it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love that the fact that you're still doing it and still passionate about it Um, i feel like you're just trying to pat me on the back like keep going kiddo well seriously yeah keep (laughs) going kiddo our our mutual friend josh sent me the link and i looked at it and i was like oh she's she's got something here so it's just a matter of other people thinking the same thing hopefully they think like me yeah it's like finding the people that uh, it's the personality cell right like that's most of it i feel like you're watching someone who fully sometimes has no idea what's going to happen <laughs> no that's I, and that's what i love about it i love those parts when you're just like i don't know how this is going to turn out yeah we don't we'll know we don't we're know find out together it's exactly us together and yeah. that's I, that's a choice right like to be like hey like you know i have to admit that i'm not an expert in this space so that's not mm-hmm. why you follow me you follow me because you're like i shouted at this girl and she made what i asked her to and i liked it that's that's <laughs> that's basically my interaction model right, right now it's like shout at me and i will yeah. do it this, this life is 100 percent about personality yeah and right. connecting with your audience for sure so let's switch gears a little bit. Now we're going to wrap up. How you doing with all this shit going on? Oh, man. It feels like more now than, you know, like this is necessary. Like creators are like, we got to create. Like that's. That's all we can do. Yeah. Like, like I can't go to the hospital and help you. No, I can't touch you. I can't see you. I can't hug you. Like I can't even bring you food. Like that's. Right. It's not an option for me. Um, and those are the ways that I, I generally feel like I comfort people. What. I felt was really interesting is I saw a tweet that said, remember that when you had nothing and the world was burning down, you turn to artists and creators. And because Mm. people are just like binging on content, they're thanking people for uploading like daily vlogs. I mean, I've watched a daily vlog of someone I never thought I'd follow. I'm like, oh, you're making content. Oh, your life is different. Oh, now you're going through all the same things I am. Like we're all struggling in this space together. And Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a, buddy you know for lack of a better word because i'm not talking to my friends every day so i feel like that's how i'm doing i'm I'm feeling the pressure to make content that makes people feel like the world's not ending right Mm. but emotionally i'm like man this is fucked up lots of feelings and thoughts about like yeah healthcare and you know like our president and a lot of political stuff that probably isn't super conducive to my brand right now <laughs> um <laughs> right but but yeah. i mean everybody's and that's I, I think everybody feels the same way you do everybody, yeah how are you doing matt how are you doing i'm, I'm hanging in there it's, yeah 
there's the stress that this whole thing puts on everybody, mm -hmm. you know, having to figure out how to work from home, mm -hmm. having to figure out childcare, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, homeschooling, juggling two adults trying to work at the same time and oh. watch the kids. Right. Yeah. And then there's some personal stuff. My wife's father, my father-in-law is um, not doing well. He's and nobody can go visit him. Right. And he's kind of stuck in the hospital and not even his wife can go visit him right now. So he's alone and everybody's just sad about that, about the fact that we can't go be with him. And I know there are there are a ton of them. I have my uncle is in the same type of situation. There's a ton of other people that are in the same type of situation who, you know, they're they're fighting cancer or whatever and they're alone because nobody can go visit them. Right. Then there's the people who are actually going through this. And I'm lucky that I don't I don't know anybody that has coronavirus right now. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you? No. I watched a video of someone who I pretend to know, right? Like, <laughs> right, you know, yeah. someone who was like, I tested positive. My boyfriend tested positive. We were in quarantine. Like, that kind of stuff where it's like, it doesn't feel real because you don't know anybody yet, right? Like, you don't know somebody. But right. there's so many people that I know in the field of, like, healthcare, nursing, administering tests, like putting their health on the line every day where I'm like, I don't know what to say other than like, thank you. Right. I can't do enough. There's a shortage of masks. I threw, I threw a box of like masks that we have bought for doing like drywall stuff. I threw a box of that over someone's fence today who's in the healthcare uh, mm. work. So that I feel like that's okay. so that, It wasn't just like a random person that you threw the box to. No, no, no. <laughs> like she's, she's tangentially re related in some sort of way. But yeah, like mm. they needed them. So it becomes mm -hmm. like a stranger space. Like if somebody like put out the call, like, do you have this? I'd be like, absolutely, you can have it. Yeah. But I just happen to have like a, a mutual in between us. Like she's not my friend. Maybe she is now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's funny that as divided as we are as a country, I mean, it takes something like this to just, pull everybody i hope pull everybody together and hopefully we can all get through this thing and by summer <laughs> we will get through it the question mark is when yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah i'm guessing you're working from home oh absolutely and so yeah. is my husband yeah. and i don't have How's kids it sounds like you have kids yeah i got three of them they're three. young eight seven and two. Oh man me at eight that that was second grade. I would be so sad to be yeah. out of second grade. That was my they favorite. They are. They both are. They're second and first, and they're, and they're both really sad to be out of school. Yeah, it's a bummer. Yeah, we are, uh, we're fine. We're fine. You know, right, like, right. we're we're lucky. Are you uh, practicing the distancing? Oh, absolutely. We've kept okay. a board up. It's been 21 days for us. Since you've gone out of your house? Since we stopped hanging out with people, like we still have to go to the grocery store, right? Like yeah, there's that yeah. transaction that is hard to avoid. Did you go? When was the last time you went? When was the last time I went? We go on Fridays. Friday. Yeah. yeah. I went the I went the other day. It was it was weird. It weird, is weird, man. I wore gloves. <gasps> you wore them. I've been trying to I've got like automotive gloves in my garage. Oh, so I wore... yeah. And I brought the hand sanitizer with me and everything. Yeah, we've definitely brought hand sanitizer and I'm just like, I don't know what works. I don't know what works. Right. Yeah, they say sanitize your groceries, don't sanitize your groceries. Oh, yeah. In the garage. No, it's fine. Bring them yeah. in. Just wash your hands. Don't don't wash your fruit with soap, but also maybe wash your fruit with soap. Like I'm like, <laughs> I don't know the answer. <laughs> like right. that's where the most potential is, is like trying to find the things that nourish you and have been bringing people comfort are the same moments where you are potentially being infected, infecting someone else or mm -hmm. like endangering someone's life. Like that is the scariest thought to me. Yes, exactly. I worked from home one day to get ready for a presentation. And that day they, they were like, don't come back to work. Like, mm. So I, I went home thinking I'll be back in the office. We got to find a room that we can put all these people in. And then it was like, no people should be near each other at all. Like, it's crazy. What do you think is going to happen at the end of all this? Do you think we're changed as a culture? Do you think we're going to be working from home more often or it won't be? I think a lot of companies that have been stuck in their old ways of not understanding remote workers and what mm -hmm. can be achieved. That will change forever. I think that's something people have had to figure out and have had to figure out how to be better at. The thing about kids at home, though, that's crazy. Like, I hope that changes. <laughs> so many children have walked through calls that I've been on. and Yeah, know. it's tough. Here's what I'm excited about. I'm excited for healthcare workers, people to be grateful for them. That's yeah. 
that's a huge change and shift in our culture. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for people to be grateful for teachers. I've seen a lot of that. I think I'm hoping there's more money in their future. They do a very hard job. I will tell my wife you said that. Oh, she's a teacher? She's a kindergarten teacher. Oh, my gosh. I remember my kindergarten In Chesterfield, and they don't get paid shit out here. Oh, they don't get paid (laughs) anything anywhere. It's awful. No, I, you know, she thinks that this may be a catalyst for year round school. Uh, she did think at first that this might have parents realize, oh, I can homeschool my kids and then pulled them out of school entirely. But then after a couple of weeks, she was like, nah, this, no, no, I think, no, I think no. if anything, we're going to have more enrollment. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I mean, there's just like that appreciation factor that is probably going to come out of this, but I'm, I'm worried how much it may dwindle after you get used to, you know, not thinking about it or like teachers have been having to, they've had to rally for their own rights. Like nobody's really out there. It feels like, you know, they, they've had to leave school so they can go and stand on the hill and make a point. Like, right. They're not going to get their kids' parents to go fight for them. They have to go fight for themselves. No. And, like, teachers have shaped me. I have I could tell you every teacher that ever said something to me that, like, kept me going. I had a teacher that, like, hugged a poem that I wrote. And I treasure that moment forever. Like, that's mm. that kind of stuff who pushed me to be more creative, a better writer, you know, go after what yep. I want. Like, teachers, I owe teachers, like, everything. I'm excited to see them be appreciated. Yeah, me too. For sure. Okay. Well, you feel good about this? You feeling good? I I feel like I sound like an idiot, but... (laughs) (laughs) Well, is there anything you want to clarify? Anything you want to say? I mean, it's done now. This The the deed's been done. It's over. Like, whatever I said, I said. All right. Well, hey, good luck with the channel. Hey, good luck with the podcast. I, you know, I was looking at your roster and I was like, oh, I'm like small potatoes compared to some... No, 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 no. Everybody's different. (laughs) <laughs> everybody's completely different i am small potato i'm very small but yeah i guess i just like uh, i always am finding other people interesting whereas you know there's like that self-doubt where you're just like i'm, I'm trash i'm a trash can outside <laughs> right <laughs> that's why i don't go on other people's podcasts I... <laughs> you like to control the narrative a little bit and never give up too much right i see the strategy Everybody already knows I'm trash. I don't need to go. No, on, like, no, no, no. Don't say that. <laughs> we can't both be trash. You're the one running the podcast. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, though, I am going to hit you up for like gear advice and stuff. Oh, and, yeah. Like editing advice. Cool. Well, I'm glad we're friends now. Yeah, we're friends. Hit me up. I'm your friend. All right. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, what a great conversation, right? I hope you guys go out to Kira's YouTube channel, check out her entertaining videos, and why don't you go ahead and give her a follow on Instagram as well, at Quarter Castle Kira. That's going to do it for today. Make sure you guys check out my show notes for any affiliate links or whatever I got going on in there, any recommendations. Like, hey, that Kindle Unlimited is still going on. I got the link in my show notes to go check it out. Me, I'm going to go ahead and start upping my creative game and hopefully get to that level that Kira's at one day. And hey, let me know how I'm doing. I'd love for you guys to leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do that as well. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. The Caught by Happy Podcast is powered by Ring Media. Join the Ring Media Network and let's make good stuff together.